Hi, welcome everyone. Nigeria's nuclear ambition didn't begin today. That's if many people know that it exists in the first place. It started way back in 1987 when a nuclear research center was set up in Amadou Bello University, Zaria. The research center is equipped with Nigeria's first nuclear research reactor, a 14 mega electron volt neutron generator, capacitance probe, isotopic neutron source, and other essential equipment for nuclear research. This is the foremost Nigerian nuclear research facility where scientists and researchers can conduct their research on many nuclear applications. The nuclear reactor reached critical stage in February 2004, and in October 2019, nuclear experts from the UK, United States, China, and Russia removed highly enriched uranium from the nuclear reactor. They went on to replace the nuclear material with a low-grade one. The IAEA and the Western world, especially the United States, have always opposed Nigeria's handling of nuclear material right from the beginning of this nuclear research center in Amadou Bello University, Zaria. There have never been an incident since research work started in the Energy Research Center. We should douse the fears of Western powers that nuclear material could be mishandled or get into the wrong hands in Nigeria. Also, there are other applications and uses of nuclear energy. Some countries see the development and the use of nuclear energy as a way of advancing their knowledge base and expanding the dependent industries, not just for power generation. Some countries also see it as a right that no one can deny them, that if other countries can develop nuclear energy, that they too can do it by themselves. They see it as a thing of pride, so to speak. Nigeria is one of the countries that believes in the use of nuclear energy to solve the electricity shortages in the country. So based on that, Nigeria will not submit to the opposition of the Western powers or the IAEA that it is too underdeveloped for nuclear energy. That was why Nigeria secretly signed a $20 billion nuclear power deal with Rosatom, a Russia state-owned company. The massive multi-billion dollar nuclear deal includes construction and operation of four nuclear power plants in Nigeria. It also includes a research center that incorporates a multi-purpose nuclear research reactor, which will be used for research in a broad range of fields like electric power production, agriculture, medicine, and other related industries. Rosatom will also deliver another research reactor to Nigeria in 2024. Nuclear power plants do take a lot of time to build, but Rosatom believes that instead of building massive nuclear power plants, small modular reactors can be used at a lesser cost. Small modular reactors pioneered by Rolls-Royce are about the same size as the reactors installed in nuclear submarines. They are cheaper to manufacture and deploy compared to traditional nuclear power stations, which can take more than a decade to move from paperwork to actual civil construction and power generation. According to Rolls-Royce, they are expected to start providing power to the UK national grid by 2029. Modular reactors make it easy for the deployment of nuclear power for electric power production. Think of it like mobile gas turbines that you just feed natural gas and it's already generating power to the national grid. Have you subscribed to our channel? Kindly subscribe now to our channel if you haven't and enable notification. Also click now to join our channel membership to donate and support our channel. Thank you for your support. The world is a huge marketplace where everyone is working hard to grab a market share. So if you're a new player in a particular industry, old players in the industry will be wary of newcomers. They will do anything within their power to stop you. They will do anything to gain advantage or become more competitive. Nigeria being an emerging economy will be a huge competitor to established or developed economies if they emulate the Chinese model. Nigeria has many advantages. They have an abundance of natural resources, including oil and gas, of course. 
Nigerian entrepreneurs and investors don't need to bother about raw materials needed to manufacture finished goods. Nigeria has a huge population which translates to a massive cheap labor that manufacturers can use to quickly fill up vacancies in assembly lines. So if Nigeria can manufacture consumer goods that are worth about 10% of the annual factory output of China, and the goods are competitive with that of China, what do you think it will lead to? It will definitely lead to job losses in factories that export the consumer goods to Nigeria. We're not even talking about export of these goods from Nigeria. We're talking about Nigeria manufacturing for the local market. Take this a step further and delve into manufacturing of technologically advanced products that is dominated by Western countries. They wouldn't stand by and let you eat into their market share, which may ultimately lead to job losses in their country. They will fight back in all sorts of ways. They might use regulation or sanctions or even spying to know what you're doing in advance. That's part of the reason Nigeria is surrounded by foreign forces. Look at all the foreign bases surrounding Nigeria. Even tiny Rwanda will deploy in Benin Republic or have they deployed their men already? They need to know what you're doing and thinking before it becomes policy or law. They want to stay ahead so as not to be taken unawares. They want to have the information on time in order to react appropriately. Look at how France hijacked the ECO. For those who don't know, the ECO was supposed to be the ECOA single currency. Immediately they saw that the ECO will finally become a reality. France quickly moved to hijack the advantage that Nigeria would have had. Macron quickly held a press conference with Cote d'Ivoire's Alassane Ouattara, announcing that the CIFA will now become ECO. This was a blatant, desperate move by Emmanuel Macron. If he hadn't done that, the ECO would have become the single currency in the ECOWAS region. And who would be printing the ECO if it wasn't hijacked by France? Nigeria's central bank, of course. It would have been an enormous opportunity for Nigeria if the currency had succeeded. Nigeria would have been able to print trillions of the ECO because it will be easy to push inflation to ECOWAS population. Just like how the United States does with the dollar, they can print trillions of dollars and push it to the world because the US dollar is like a world currency. How can Nigeria counter all these measures already taken by other countries? First of all, Nigeria shouldn't be relying on competing countries or future potential competitors for all projects. A competitor can never build a factory in Nigeria that would be better than the one they have in their home country. Likewise, many other projects. They can't give you the best when they themselves don't have the best. Also, there are certain products that a country can never sell to you. They are not for sale at any price. The United States will never sell the F-35 to many countries, including Nigeria. Even the few they sell to Nigeria, they attach too many conditions that sometimes looks like a handicap. Look at Ajokuta Steel. After spending billions of dollars in an uncompleted and non-functional steel factory, Nigeria will still pay about $500 million to Global Steel of India as an out-of-court settlement. For those who don't know the story, Global Steel won the controversial privatization of Ajokuta Steel during the Obasanjo administration. Yaradua cancelled the whole process because Global Steel was accused of asset stripping the complex. Global Steel sued Nigeria for billions of dollars in damages. And what's with Nigeria being taken to court in foreign countries all the time? Is there a treaty that Nigeria signed that gives British courts jurisdiction in Nigeria? Even if it's arbitration courts, it's time Nigeria did something about it. You don't hear other countries getting hammered with heavy fines in court all the time. The loss of Bakasi Peninsula is still fresh in memory. We seriously need to fix our foreign policy. Anyway, we've wasted billions of dollars going around in circles and Ajokuta still is still not operational. All the billions of dollars wasted would have been used to complete the complex and run it efficiently. Privatization doesn't solve all problems as have been proven by all the companies privatized during the Obasanjo administration. Nigeria needs to learn how to build and manufacture things by themselves. We're already learning and building some. We need to double our efforts. Proof is making Nigeria proud. 
it looks like Ukraine will be buying APCs from Profos. Anyway, this story and other amazing breakthrough stories will be reserved for another video. We hope you enjoyed this video. While you wait for more, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notification. Also, make sure to join our channel membership to donate and support our channel. Special thanks goes to those who have donated and joined already. Till next time, bye-bye.